สวัสดีค่ะ and good afternoon this is the English language summary of the daily press briefing live from the Center for COVID-19 Situation Administration or the CCSA for today's briefing which is Monday the 12th of July 2021 I'll be recapping some important information that was announced over the weekend, as well as last Friday. I wish to also remind the public to follow our briefings, which will continue with a new schedule at three times a week. That's every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So let's begin today's briefing with an update on the number of vaccines that have been administered. To date, so since uh, this number is as of the 12th of July, actually um, we cut the statistics at midnight um, of the 11th of July. The accumulated number of vaccines now stands at 12.56 million doses, and this is counting. Um, you may check the real-time number of vaccinations being administered on the MoProm application as well. Within this high-risk groups, which is currently the priority of our vaccination campaign, more than 15% of people aged 60 and over, and 18% of people with underlying medical medical conditions have already received at least one dose of the vaccine. I wish to also use this opportunity to express gratitude for the 1.05 million doses of AstraZeneca vaccine which was donated to us from the government of Japan and the vaccines which arrived Last Friday should be ready for distribution to our vaccination centers by Wednesday to inoculate senior Thais and foreigners in the risk groups as we mentioned earlier. So we had this uh, ceremony earlier today. Thank you again, Japan government. Now over to the statistics that we have reported today, we have new confirmed cases standing today at 8,656 cases. Uh, the new number of recoveries today stands at 3,687. Um, and new fatalities today stands at 80. So the accumulated number of fatalities stands today at 2,791. And in the overall observations from the statistics today, uh, from the CCSA meeting, we found that the areas with the highest number of new cases still is in Bangkok. And Bangkok stands today with confirmed cases at 2,399, which is slightly lower than yesterday, followed by Samut Sakon, which stands at 591 cases today. Samut Prakan stands at 405 cases. Thonburi, 399, and Batum Thani at 397. We see that infected cases are now being discovered in every province across the country. And half of the newly confirmed COVID patients are in Bangkok. And this is a roughly around 4,420 cases. Um, they are around Bangkok and peripheral areas. And the number of newly confirmed cases in the four dark red zone provinces in the southern part of Thailand follow Bangkok as well. And most cases are found in those who have traveled across provinces from high risk areas and workers in construction campsites or other risk areas such as fresh markets, factories and other areas where there is limited ventilation ventilation and crowding. And many cases found in Batum Thani are from active case findings conducted in Talat, Thai market, which has a total active case 
uh, findings of 3,166 within the, this particular cluster. And there's also a new cluster in Batum Thani at a gas equipment establishment, which discovered 13 cases of infections. So therefore, the risk areas continue to be factories, workplaces, construction camps, markets, and crowded areas. And also, infections from close contacts with infected family members are still a major cause of concern. Now, I'd like to repeat some of the new disease control measures which have been announced since Friday as well as over the weekend because they are now in effect as of today, actually technically since midnight last night, and they will be in effect for, for at least 14 days, that's until 25th of July, but measures will be assessed and adjusted as needed. So the measures you see on the slide for the six provinces, which are Bangkok, Nonthaburi, Batum Thani, Nakhon Batum, Samut Prakan, and Samut Sakhon. The measures in these six provinces include the closure of shopping centers, with exceptions for supermarkets, takeout restaurants, banks and financial institutions, pharmacies, and communication devices shops. Um, within these areas, of course, socializing with groups larger than five people is also prohibited, with an exception for work-related activities. But of course, any work-related activities of this, um, of this size and more must be done with utmost caution and in observance of disease control measures. Also, restaurants, markets, shopping malls, and convenience stores must be closed at 20 hundred hours or 8 o'clock in the evening. Public parks are open for exercising, but they must be closed at 20 hundred hours or 8 o'clock in the evening as well. Public transportation will finish their daily services at 2100 hours or 9 o'clock in the evening and resume again at 4 o'clock in the morning. Spas, beauty centers, and massage parlors will be closed, and there is a curfew for the public living in the 10 provinces in the dark red zone from 2100 hours to 0400 hours, that's 9 o'clock in the evening until 4 o'clock in the morning. However, those with, with specific occupations or assignments related to health services, transportation, or necessary public services are exempted from that rule, but they must provide uh, written approval for their assignments. Now, I'd like to bring your attention to uh, an important um, information about uh, vaccination for our public, for our medical personnel. We from the CCSA would like to stress that we give utmost importance to all medical personnel and our frontline workers who have been risking their lives to curb the spread of the disease and they've been tending uh, with greatest dedication to COVID patients. And this is why the government has always prioritized them in our national vaccine rollout to ensure that they are accorded the best possible protection while they carry out their very important tasks. To date, we have inoculated over 700,000 medical personnel which counts for about 97% within their group. So you'll see on the slide, on the screen right now, yesterday the Ministry of Public Health gave a press briefing to inform the public about vaccinating medical personnel. And they found that from April to July of this year, 880 uh, medical personnel, or about 
2% were infected with COVID-19, and around 20% of those 880 people were not vaccinated. And just now, Dr. Apisamai also mentioned this case. We administered both AstraZeneca and Sinovac vaccines to our healthcare professionals. Unfortunately, there was one case where one nurse passed away last week, despite receiving both shots of Sinovac vaccines, and another nurse is still under critical condition. And this case has been under investigation. And Dr. Apisamai just uh, stressed right now that uh, because of constant contact with the coronavirus in concentrated levels and for longer periods of time, as well as having underlying medical conditions, this could have contributed to vaccination failure and uh, this regretful loss of an invaluable healthcare professional. And our thoughts and prayers go to the family and friends for this irreparable loss. We'd like to emphasize that despite this, all vaccines have been proven to be efficient in preventing hospitalization and death. And out of 677,348 medical personnel who received complete doses of Sinovac vaccine, only 618 were infected with the virus. And out of 618 who were vaccinated, only two became seriously ill or were reported as vaccine failures. However, to ensure that our medical professionals are safe, today, the National Committee on Infectious Diseases will officially approve the plan to offer a booster shot to medical personnel. And the additional third shot will either be AstraZeneca vaccine, which we already have in stock, or Pfizer vaccine that is due to arrive later this month. Now let me bring your attention to another slide to inform you about how we are going to strengthen active case findings. Within this week, the, Bang the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration, or the BMA, and the Department of Disease Control will increase testing capacity to an additional of 10,000 per day, or over 10,000 per day. And these are to, to be provided to the public free of charge. And the testing centers are now already open in three locations, which are at Tupat Temi Stadium, Rajamangala National Stadium, and Dang Watanak Government Complex. And starting from Wednesday, the 14th of July onwards, one additional testing site will be opened at the Air Defense Artillery Division. This is in Gyekai area at Dusit district of Bangkok. And each site will be capable of providing 3,000 rapid ant antigen tests per day. Moreover, starting from today as well, the Social Security Office has opened a new COVID active case site finding center for the general public at the Thai Japanese Stadium. So this is in Dindang of Bangkok, and the center can provide 2,000 RT-PCR tests per day. People who wish to take the test can make an online registration at the Social Security Office's website, which appears now on the screen in front of you at uh, sso.icntracking.com slash home. And foreign nationals can also register to get tested by using your passport number. So before I go today, I'd like to reiterate that right now we may be feeling that the current situation we're facing is a daunting challenge as the infection rates continue to be high. But the Ministry of Public Health assesses that we could see results from our stricter measures within a month if everyone works together to comply with our 
disease control measures strictly. However, this cannot be possible without the cooperation of all sectors of society and of course the public to exercise full caution. And by complying with our measures, despite them inconveniencing you, you are helping our healthcare professionals to fight the virus. And the government cannot do this alone without your help and cooperation. And we want to also express our deepest gratitude to the foreign embassies here in Thailand who have been helping us in disseminating valuable information about our disease control measures and having all foreign nationals understand what is going on in Thailand and giving them advice as well to assist us in our efforts to curb this outbreak. So I thank you all for this. And we urge our audience to follow important updates, not only from our briefings, but also from foreign embassies as well, so you can keep abreast of the latest measures. So with the contribution of all sectors of society, we will see a positive change soon. I thank you for your kind attention today. Stay safe and healthy, and Kudnatapanu will be seeing you at our briefing again on Wednesday. Kok kun ka, swadika.